Welcome to Learnpedia, the 24 bar 7 JE and NEET resource at your fingertips. Now, let's see if you can answer this important question. If you think you got the answer, post it in the comment section below. To know the best way to solve this question, continue watching this video further. Let us now discuss new topic, exchange of gases. In human body, we can take two sites for gas exchange. One between alveoli and blood capillaries. This exchange is referred as external respiration. And second exchange site is between blood capillaries and tissue cells. Such exchange is called internal respiration. Exchange of gases in body occurs according to partial pressure of gases like partial pressure of oxygen, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, partial pressure of nitrogen means the part of oxygen in air, the part or percentage of CO2 in air, the part or percentage of nitrogen in air. Let us now first discuss gas exchange between alveoli and capillaries. So the exchange between capillaries and alveoli we have already said is called external respiration. So now see, whenever we inhale air, listen, we inhale air. Air contains O2, CO2, N2 and traces of other gases. In air, percentage of O2 is approx 21%. This percent is at the pressure of 760 mm of Hg. If we calculate 21% of 760, it would be around 159 mm of Hg. So we can say, the air we inhale has pressure of oxygen around 159 but the air which enters up to alveoli has pressure around 104 mm of Hg. So at this part let us suppose this is alveoli and this is blood capillary. Pressure of oxygen in alveoli is around 104 and pressure of CO2 in alveoli is around 40. The blood which is moving towards alveoli is deoxygenated so it must have less oxygen and more CO2. So level of oxygen in this blood is around 40 and level of CO2 is around 45 or 46. So according to law of diffusion, gases will diffuse from their high pressure to low pressure. Means now oxygen will diffuse from alveoli to blood and CO2 get diffuse out from capillaries to alveoli. This exchange is called external respiration. This inflow of oxygen increases partial pressure of oxygen. It's around 95 mm of Hg and partial pressure of CO2 declines, it becomes 40 or just less than 40 mm of Hg. Now this blood which is moving away from alveoli is called oxygenated blood. We can see in this figure the air entering the alveoli and here oxygen get 104. Actual air entering was at a pressure of 159 mm of Hg and the CO2 in alveoli will be 40. The blood moving towards alveoli as it is shown in blue color so it must be deoxygenated so it has oxygen at a pressure of 40 and co2 at a pressure of 46 now co2 will move out and o2 will move in and this blood now get oxygenated because now pressure of oxygen here get 95 and co2 get 40 from this part the blood vessel which bring this oxygenated blood to heart will be now pulmonary vein these pulmonary veins now open in left atria from here blood reaches to left ventricle from left ventricle Blood get pumped to body by aortic arc or we can also call it systemic aorta. This is that aortic arc. Now blood leaving the heart will carry oxygenated blood towards tissues and in the tissues. Since pressure of O2 is less and CO2 is high, so CO2 will move out and O2 will move in. This will be the second site for gas exchange between capillary and tissue cell. So this exchange would be called internal respiration. Now this deoxygenated blood get collected in right atria by inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. From right atria it enters in right ventricle and from right ventricle it get pumped to pulmonary artery which can be depicted here which will carry deoxygenated blood towards lungs and finally CO2 get exhaled out. You can check in this table, the inspired air has O2 159, in alveoli it's 104, in deoxygenated blood it's 40, in oxygenated blood it's 95, in tissues it's 40. So, the air which is entering from atmosphere to alveoli and now from 104, air will reach to deoxygenated blood which will become oxygenated and up to 95 and from the oxygenated blood, when blood gets supplied to tissue cell, it will release oxygen in tissues. So, you can see here. Everywhere oxygen is moving from high pressure to low pressure at this point. This was the deoxygenated blood. After getting oxygen 
its pressure get high and reaches up to 95 so if we talk about now levels of co2 the air we inhale contain very less co2 in tissues due to metabolic activities means due to oxidation of glucose level of co2 get increased and blood reaching toward tissue contains less co2 because the blood reaching toward tissue is oxygenated so it must have more oxygen and less co2 so the blood reaching to the tissues contains less co2 and more oxygen so oxygen will liberated from blood to tissues and co2 from tissues to blood so this will be the internal respiration so let us now discuss both the exchange external as well as internal with a flow chart it will be quite easy to understand now see let us suppose this is alveoli and this is some blood capillary in alveoli co2 is 104 which we have already mentioned and pco2 is 40 blood reaching to alveoli has po2 40 and pco2 45 or 46 so blood moving ahead will get oxygen and will release co2 so at this point po2 get 95 and pco2 get around 40 in tissue cell due to oxidation of glucose level of po2 get decrease up to 40 and level of pco2 get increase up to 45 or 46 so when oxygenated blood will try to pass near to tissue cells having po2 95 and pco2 40 here due to difference in pressure oxygen get released to tissue cells and co2 will come out from tissue cells this exchange will lead to pressure of oxygen to 40 and pressure of co2 to 45 or 46 means the blood again get deoxygenated and then this deoxygenated blood from all the parts of body get collected in right atria via inferior vena cava and superior vena cava from right atria to right ventricle and again to lungs by pulmonary aorta so this is the discussion of exchange of gases at two sides between alveoli and capillary and between capillary and tissue cell so by one more way we will try to understand external respiration means exchange between alveoli and blood capillaries you can see here air is rushing in to alveoli and here pressure of oxygen will be high and co2 will be less so co2 will move out from capillaries to alveoli and o2 will give in from alveoli to capillaries o2 will get bind to hemoglobin in rbc and finally transports in the form of oxyhemoglobin so simply you can see here around alveoli there are capillaries they are releasing co2 and getting o2 so in this next diagram we can see exchange between blood capillaries and tissue cells so we can call it internal respiration again we can see here the blood is rushing towards tissue cells will release o2 to tissue cells because o2 in tissue cell is less and tissue cell will release co2 to the blood and blood will take co2 away i hope you can now answer the question you can take a look at the solution here. Found this video useful? Hit the like and share icons to enjoy more such videos. Learn PDS, JE and NEET prep tools contain more than 4000 questions and over 20,000 solved examples. These can be accessed online through our website or offline through an SD card or a pen drive. To buy now, visit www.learnpedia.in. You can also try a free demo of our product before buying.